said from the cross. I want to talk to you about the power of the cross. Without the cross, you know, we, we talk about the resurrection, of course, on Easter and celebrate that and how important the resurrection is, but we would not have Resurrection Sunday without the cross. Luke chapter 23, verse number 33 is what we'll start out reading, but we're going to have a couple of verses here that we're going to look at uh, this morning. Luke 23, 33. The Bible says, And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come today. God, help us to not just look at another message about the cross, but God, pray that it does something to us this morning, that it changes us. God, we believe, I believe this is the remedy for everything going on in our world today uh, with all the things that's going on in our country and, and, and really all over the world uh, you don't hear much about uh, I believe the one fix we could talk about a vaccine we talk about all these things uh, that would help and I believe the remedy for the world today is the cross God I pray that we, it makes an impact on us uh, as Christians, we preached on it and hear about it preached and talk about it so much. But God, help us just to go back there for a few minutes this morning and realize what took place on that day over 2,000 years ago that changed the world forever. And God, that changed us and, and should continue to change us, that continue to remind us as to why we do what we do, who we are, and uh, why uh, we come to this place every week and the reason that we try to live our lives as Christians it all has to do because of what you did on Calvary we love you we praise you we thank you so much for being here this morning it's in Jesus name we pray amen and amen now today I want to look at a few uh, the final uh, moments of Jesus here while he was on the earth and some things that he said uh, on the cross. Now, you might uh, think and, and say, well, uh, we look at that all the time and talk about that all the time. And, and, and that is the center, of course, of why uh, we come to church. It's the reason we're here this morning. But uh, I was looking at it again, as I said last week, and the Lord was showing me some stuff out of this. And I want to share it with you this morning. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. I, I really believe, as I said, that it would be the remedy for what's going on in our world today if people would go to the cross, if they would uh, realize that's what's wrong uh, in our country, if they would go back to this and realize what Jesus did for mankind, not just the Jews and not just a certain group of people, but for everybody, as we talked about a little bit last week, and how important uh, the stuff is. and. Uh, and, and the things that he said uh, on this cross to say one word in the position that he was in on that cross uh, would have been amazing much less seven things that he said on the cross and he said some very important things uh, on the cross it wasn't just a bunch of mumbles it wasn't just uh, groanings or pain that was causing him to uh, uh, moan and groan he said some important stuff that I believe is worth talking about and mentioning today. Without the cross, there is no Easter morning. Amen. Paul said, I choose to know nothing among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And you think about that. You think about how that would simplify uh, our witness, how it would simplify our churches if we would go back to that and realize that and say, I know, preacher, we talk about that all the time because that's the center of who we are. That's the reason uh, we are here. That's the reason uh, uh, Brother George built this church here uh, over 50 years ago is because of the cross and what Jesus did on that cross on that fateful day. And Paul said, I choose to know nothing among you 
saved Jesus Christ and him crucified. That really does simplify. That really does break it down uh, to the bare essentials of who we are and why we are and what we're doing. Amen. It's because of Jesus Christ and what he did. A cross to the Jews is a stumbling block. To the Greeks, it's foolishness. But to them that perish, it is life eternal amen the power of the resurrection is very important but jesus set me free to walk in the power when he hung on the cross at calvary i want to look at a few things out of this and what he said here and, and, and then we'll let you go enjoy your day luke chapter 23 verse 34 uh we see here forgiveness for people that have uh, uh, unjustly wronged you hey man he says here then jesus says father forgive them father forgive them for they know not what they do and they praised they parted his garment and cast lots hey man luke 23 43 23 says and jesus said unto them verily i say unto thee today shalt thou be with me in paradise today you will be with me in paradise notice how he's concerned for others even though he was going through what he was going through on the cross and the pain that he was suffering, he still was concerned about what other people were feeling. He was concerned about the thief on the cross and with the bad shape that he was in, wondering about his eternity. And Jesus reassured him that because you believe in me, uh, you will be with me today in paradise now there wasn't another disciple john 19 john 19 verse 26 and 27 if you want to flip back there with me matthew mark luke and john the next book over john 19 verse 26 and 27 john 19 verses 26 and 27 notice something he said here he said when jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by the disciple where's the rest of them i always say amen but when he therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved he saith unto his mother woman behold thy son he was not only concerned about the man that was dying beside of him. He was concerned about his family. He was concerned about his earthly mother. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. He was making sure uh, that he was taken care of, and he was making sure that his mother was taken care of. He said, I'm going away now, so I want you to step in my position as her earthly son on this earth. And from that hour... That disciple took her unto his own home. Amen. Took her to his own home. But there, now there wasn't another disciple, as I said, to give his mother to, but John, because they had left. But if you show up at the cross, I want you to get this. If you show up at the cross, you'll inherit family members that you never would have otherwise. Amen. When you show up at the cross, you will inherit family members that you never would have otherwise. When you live in the shadow of the cross, you will find others there. Hey, Amen. You will find others there that become family because of one common thing. Hey, Amen. We're family in this church because of what Jesus did at the cross. We don't have to have anything else in common but that hey man a lot of us don't you see people uh, that go to church together that love one another that absolutely uh, have nothing else in common except jesus christ and him crucified hey man that's awesome and, and and actually become family i consider you guys as part of my family because of what jesus did for us and we share in that common goal that shows the power and the impact of what the cross does and what the cross did for us and what Jesus did on that cross. That's why we show up here every week because of what Jesus did. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to have family that I've inherited 
because of what he did on that day. Matthew 27, 46, you don't have to flip there, but Jesus knew that he was coming down to die for the sins of man and understood that everyone has the capability to turn their back or turn their back on him, even his own disciples. Amen. But this is where he said, but not my father. Father, he said, my, uh, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? He said, I understood and knew that everybody else was capable of doing that, but not my Father. This was a, an amazing saying on the cross. I believe it shows uh, the hurt by Jesus, his humanity side. He knew why. Listen, the God side of him knew why God did what he did on that day. But the human side of him, it hurt that the Father turned his back. He turned his back, of course we know, because he couldn't look upon the sin that was placed on his son, even though that had to be, uh, ha that had to happen. That's why he came. He was born to die. Amen. He turned his back, but he did that once, so he never had to turn his back on us one time. Amen. Ever. So I'm thankful for that. Jesus allowed himself a moment of being forsaken that we could say he will never leave us or forsake us. Amen. So he allowed that. Even though it hurt uh, on the inside to know, he understood. Now think about this. He understood uh, Peter was one that stood up and said, Hey, if you go to death, I'll go with you. If you go, I'll go with you. I'll be beside of you. Peter was long. He was one of the first ones. Hey, man, that was long gone. Uh, John was the only one that was there. He said, I understood that they're my disciples. Uh, they're, they're just men. They're, they're but flesh. I understood that they would turn their back back but not you my father so think of the things that he went through on the cross I mean I mean I bet he felt more alone at that time in history and in eternity than ever before and then he ever would again amen but he suffered that for you and for me amen I'm thankful uh, that he did I'm thankful that he went to the cross amen for my sin and for yours amen as they were singing a few minutes ago about how he left I like that song that he left the 99 and went after one little lost lamb. Lord, here I am. Amen. I'm thankful that he did. He said his humanity was also shown in John 19, 28 when he said, I thirst. I thirst. I believe that this showed, as I say, his humanity. Uh, but it was also a fulfillment of Scripture, you see. So these weren't just mumblings. These weren't just murmurs. Listen, if it had been me or you on there, it had been all we could have mustered up was to moan in pain. Amen. So he was fulfilling Scripture. So think about that because you've got to understand now, he's 100% man, 100% God, but the pain, the suffering that he went through and was able to stay mindful of enough to understand that he was fulfilling scripture and now listen let me let me back up there just a second i don't think he necessarily had to think about it because he was the word amen the word was made flesh and dwelt among us but my point is that he was mindful enough to say what he said on that cross listen it would make me hey listen it would make me forget my mama's name if i was hurting that bad and he sit there and said these things he was concerned for others he was concerned for his mom he was concerned for his disciples he was concerned for us that's why he endured the cross amen for us but to imagine what he went through the pain that he went through and the sayings that he said on this cross the power of the cross this one this is the one that i want to focus on just for a few minutes today when he said in john 19 and 30 when he said it is done it is finished amen he said it is finished luke 23 46 he said father into thy hands i commend my spirit amen was the last saying uh, that he spoke from the cross but john uh john 19 and 30 he says i, I want to share a few things out of this this morning as he said it is finished about this sixth cry from calvary that he could have meant several several things with this cry but i want to share just a few of them with you and i'll let you go home jesus was born as i say to die all other men were born to live but he was born to die that's why he came not to be born in a manger not because of christmas he was born 
to die. He wasn't born on this earth to go healing people. That was just a secondary consequence of who he was on the road to Calvary. Amen. His life had a map from Bethlehem to Calvary. And everything along the way was just a consequence of people getting in his way. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible said his face was fixed like a flint toward Calvary. He understood his purpose from the beginning. Amen. He knew why he come to this earth to die. He had to go through the process of being born to be capable to die for our sins. Consider this. His death at Calvary was the supreme purpose of being born at Bethlehem. The main reason he came was for a cross at a place called Calvary on a hill called Skull. That's why he came. He didn't come to get money, fame, or fortune. Amen. And the miracles he did, but he came to die. That's why he come to this earth I'm thankful for that the song says suppose they searched all over heaven looking for one I want you to know they wasn't but one that could have done what he did and it was Jesus amen first thing I want you to see out of this the awful suffering that he had uh, that he had been through they rush him late at night now to Caiaphas. They come in, and he's still, I believe the, the kiss was still wet on his cheek from the betrayal of Judas. They rushed him to Caiaphas by night. They smacked him around. They beat him. I always say, and remember, I think about this because of football. Uh, the bulls of Bashan come past him about. That was what they would do when you was young, and you play football, and you boys that play football in here, they would sit you in the center of all them other, I don't know if they did that now because somebody's feelings might get hurt if they and, and so anyway they put you in the center back then when I went to school because they didn't care about your feelings and they stick you in the center and they have all these guys that would surround you and they'd call out their number and that number you'd have to turn and make sure you block this guy or he'd knock your block off if you didn't and that's what they do they'd hit you and, and that's what they did with Jesus they put our Savior in the middle of all them big Roman soldiers and they bust him and they hit him in the face and, and knock him to one side and then they knock him back to the other and he suffered all that for me and you amen he went through this this 24 hour period would have killed most of us amen uh, but he had as I said to go to the cross he didn't come to be smacked around he come to go to the cross amen then early the next morning they pushed him up to a uh, pilot and hurried him over to Herod, then back to Pilate, where they scourged him, they beat him, and put a crown of thorns on his head. Hey Amen. This ordeal lasted all night. Hey Amen. And thankfully, finally, that was over. So that was finished, the beating, the scourging that he went through. But it wasn't over yet. Hey Amen. He went through hell, the hell of being betrayed, as I said, by his own so-called brother Judas. He knew uh, that the, that kiss of Judas, as I said, was probably still wet on his cheeks. He knew what it was to be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. I mean, all the stuff he had done, the power that he gave his disciples, the life-changing impact that he made on them, and all he was worth to one of them was 30 pieces of silver. You think about that. Hey, man, you say, he sold Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. But I'm going to say this with all the love that I can muster, but we've sold him out for a lot less than that. Amen? People's been guilty of selling him out for a lot less than that. Amen? I'll never forget this story, and I, I know I've told it before, but it, it really sticks with me, and it goes with this right here. The guy uh, got on the bus, and the man on the bus at that time was taking taking money from them as they was riding the bus. He put change in, and the guy gave him something back, and the guy had given him a quarter too much. He was a new preacher in this town that he was moved into in this new community. And he got on the bus, and the guy gave him a quarter back too much, He's sitting in the back of the bus before he got to his stop. He looked. He said, well, it's just a quarter. I mean, ain't nobody going to miss a quarter. I don't know if I want to go through the hassle of even saying anything about it. Everybody was in a hurry, and they was dropping them off at the stops. And the guy gets to his stop, and he, he went up, and he said he almost put that quarter in his pocket. And he turned to that bus driver. He said, hey, he said, you give me back a quarter too much. And the bus driver said, oh, yeah. He said, you're the new preacher in the community. 
And the guy got off and he said he was shaking. He was trembling because he almost sold out Christ for a quarter. Hey, man, think about that. Now, we don't think about it. We say, you may think, well, I ain't sold him out. Listen, we sold him out for a lot less than that on occasion. Hey, man, so we got to be careful with what we do because people sometimes do know you more than you think they do and understand what you're about, and they will sure bring it up when they see you mess up. Amen. That's for sure. They'll sure call you out on it, and rightly so, amen. We should try to do our best. But now I can understand how someone would betray me because but Jesus was perfect. And as I say, I could see that. It hurts when people betray you, don't it? It's hurtful. Hey, man, and we've had friends, I'm sure, that's betrayed us. Uh, you probably had friends that you've heard were talking about you behind your back. That's betrayal. That hurts. Especially when it comes from somebody you thought wouldn't do that to you. Uh, that's the most pain that anybody, I believe, could experience, especially if it's somebody real close to you. So you have a sense, somewhat of a sense, of what Jesus went through by being betrayed by Judas. Hey, man, his brother that he gave everything to, that he would have gladly, he would have died for and did die for, by the way, would have given anything for. Hey, man, he said you betrayed the Son of Man with a kiss, Judas. Hey, man, so how sad that that was. And Judas even realized it later on. He said, I have betrayed innocent blood. Hey, man, I have betrayed innocent blood. Nothing in his character. And as I say, I can understand even how somebody could betray me, but not Jesus. He was perfect. He was perfect. Nothing in his character would cause anyone to do this. Nothing about him would cause somebody to want to get back at him. You think about that. He was perfect. They couldn't find a false witness against him. Amen. He was perfect. He was perfect in character. He was perfect in integrity. Amen. But yet he was betrayed by his own brother in the flesh. Amen. And after after betrayal, after betrayal, the scourging, the crown of thorns, the, then we find the shouldering of the cross, dragging it up, God got this hill, the spikes in his hands and feet, and the cross standing up. He is hanging there naked, suspended between heaven and earth, through uh, though fit as he was though fit for neither. Seeing him hanging there in every breath, breath was a stab of pain. I wonder what was on his mind. I was thinking about this last night. I wonder what he had to be thinking. On the on, listen, we can't even understand what he'd been thinking on the royal side, on the God side, but he's hanging there as a man as well, you see, and thinking about what must have been on his mind. I wonder what he must have been thinking. Now, we know some of the things he was thinking because he spills them out here, but then I thought that through the silence and through maybe, maybe, just maybe, and not to take anything from it, but maybe just from a brief moment of relief when he could push up one last time or a cool breeze of air if there was one or, or, if, or if the sun went behind the cloud and, and, it, and it cooled just for a moment. What must he had been thinking? I think about stuff like that. What was on his mind? Hey, man, what was he thinking? Did, did I come across his mind? That's, that's hard. That's hard for me. Hey, man, but that's the truth. He had us all on his mind before we ever even thought of. Because, see, he, the Bible said he endured the cross for what was to come, you see. That's why he endured it. He could because he knew the 99. He knew you. He knew we'd be here this morning. It's hard to imagine that he would think about our little church while he's hanging on that cross. Now, listen, you might not place that much value on yourself, but he does. Hey, man, like Christian was saying, and the boys were saying there a minute ago, that's who we are. We are loved by him, man. And he's hanging there and thinking. I wonder if he thought of High Ridge Baptist Church. He's thinking about our little group that was here, and he says, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, that makes you valuable when you think about it like that. It's hard for me to picture that. It's hard for me even saying it to picture that he would do that, but that's why you're valuable because he did do that. He's shouldering the cross, standing there suspended on that cross between heaven and earth. I wonder what was on his mind. I wonder what heaven, I thought about this, I wonder what heaven was doing. I bet you, I bet you in, 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 in time, in history, because we know that heaven is a place of praise. 
But I bet you anything, amen, when we get there and we talk back and they talk back to the day that this took place in history, I bet there wasn't a dry eye in heaven, and I bet there wasn't. Listen, he's going to wipe all the tears away, but I bet you anything, when they seen the Son of Man hanging on that cross, there wasn't a, you could have heard a pin drop. I just about bet you the Father said, this is not a day of praise today. Now, it was a praise of what he was doing and what was to come, but to see his son hanging on that cross going, and them people walking by him that he done all that for, spitting on him and giving him vinegar for something to drink and, all, and the mockery and them casting lots at his feet. We know he was angry. Hey, man, we know he had to be angry. He split the, the, the he, he rent the temple in half. Hey, man. Don't think he wasn't, he liked to, he probably would have rented all of them in half. Hey Amen. But listen, uh, they're up there. Imagine what heaven was doing as they're watching all this take place. I bet you every eye in heaven uh, could see it and, and was watching. What would, you know why? You know why they were? This is why I believe they were. Because he was the center of attention. He should still be and he still is the center of attention. Amen. The earthquakes that went by was to let everybody know on earth that something was taking place that you ought to take note of. When, it, when the earth went dark in the middle of the day that day, God was letting everybody know, I'm turning the lights out to let everybody know this ain't right. Something monumental is happening today. Whether they was there and could see it, they knew something. If you went back in history after that day, people, I believe, across all the way on the other side of the earth said, we don't know what happened, but something big was going on. Hey, Amen. Because the way the earth shook and the lights went out in the middle, this, this wasn't normal. Something happened. Hey, Amen. But I believe all the eyes of heaven was on his only begotten son hanging there on that cross was suspended between heaven and earth hanging on to every breath listening to everything that he had to say watching uh, the angels that was gathered around because listen he could have called 10,000 legions of angels to come get him so imagine that if you could have seen that imagine what that must have looked like I bet those angels were sitting there like this ready to pounce ready to go at, any, any, at a moment's notice Father, you just give the word, and we'll wipe out everybody and get him down. Amen. But he didn't do it. He didn't do it. He hung there. Why? Because he came to die. He came to die. Amen. I wonder what he was thinking. I wonder what heaven was doing. I'd like to say nothing but listening uh, to, uh, to intently to every word, as I said, that he had to say. The very people that he created were mocking him and scourging him and spitting on him. The reason we get happy and cry and shout is because of the cross. Amen. That's why the reason everyone, uh, everyone has a great testimony and you have testimonies that you can give to people is because of him and what he did on the cross. I never raise my hands because I'm a Baptist. I raise my hands because of the cross. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If the cross doesn't still excite people, uh, that's what's wrong with us. Amen. We ought to get excited about what he did for us. He didn't do that for you so you could come to church for one hour on Sunday. Sunday. He did that so you could have a life and have life more abundantly. That's why he came. That's why he died. To give us an eternity with him apart from this sin and apart from this place. Amen. He went through that because of my addiction. He went through that because of my pride. He went through that because of my lying tongue. Amen. But he does not have to go through that again. Why? Because he said it is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He didn't come back to die. He already died. The Bible said he did that once for man and once only. Amen. And people say, well, I got to get saved again. If you had to get saved again, he'd have to die again. Amen. The Bible said there were, once you come to the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. Why? Because he was a one-time deal, one and done. It is finished. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We get to go to heaven because of what Jesus did.
Yes, amen. I'm thankful, amen, for what he's done for me and for you. Amen. He didn't go through that because of my religion. Amen. That was the love at its finest hanging there on that cross. That's what love looks like. That's what it looks like. Him suspended between heaven and earth. That's what love looks like. Hallelujah. Amen. He went through that uh, because he loved us. Amen. And, say, and, and, and the next one here, it is finished for the redemption of mankind. That was also finished. There was only one thing uh, that, that, that changed me. Amen. The cross, the cross, the cross. Amen. Nothing else could change me. It took the cross to do that. What's going to change this world? It's not going to be a vaccine. It's not going to be more laws. It's going to be the cross, the cross, the cross. That's what it's going to take for the world to change. Amen. That's what it takes for all of mankind to change. What was that worth? What was the cross worth? And to people it seems like not much. And that's so sad. When you're too tired to pray, what was that cross worth? When you're too busy to witness for him, what was the cross worth? I'm preaching cause of the cross. I got called into the ministry to preach the cross. Paul said, as we already talked about already, he said, I come to you uh, uh, nothing amongst you but the cross and him crucified. Amen. That's why I preach. That's why I go, amen, build the church. We built the church. George built this church, as I said a minute ago, because of the cross. Amen. And actually, he defeated the power of darkness on the cross. Amen. He defeated defeated the power of darkness on the cross. I, I've shared, I think, this story before, but it's, it's worth mentioning again. There was an old writer that wrote about an old preacher years ago, and he tells a story about one day that there was a preacher, an old man, in his garden, and he heard hunting dogs coming down the way. He heard these hunting dogs nearby and noticed running toward him was a, was a pretty little young deer, a little young fawn was running his way and completely uh, scared to death and just about out of breath and had run just about as far as he could. And, and, and it looked once to the left and once to the right, the, 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 the man said, and, and what it did, it jumped right up into the preacher's arms running from these dogs. Then the dogs, the, the, it said, the man said, then the dogs came after them. And, and this guy, uh, this, this old preacher found a big stick. And for 20 minutes, he sat there and he would beat them dogs away one at a time to get them off of that deer. He had the deer in his arms and that big old stick. And he was beating them dogs off of that little old deer. And afterward, the fawn, they said, after that, that fawn would never leave that man's sight. Because he beat all them hounds off of him and wouldn't let them get to him. So he had a friend for life. And I got to thinking about this. What did Jesus mean when he said it is finished? He was saying this. That if you'll jump up here in my arms, I will run every hellhound off your trail. Amen. If you jump up here in my arms, I'll run every hound from hell off your trail. He has... He, everyone, everyone that was intended for you and for me. If someone here this morning is being chased by them dogs, amen, you ought to jump up in his arms and let him beat the hellhounds off your trail. That's what Jesus did on the cross. It is finished. The power of the cross. Let's bow our heads. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whew. I love to hear people talk and, and share about what God's done for them when they share testimony and think about what Jesus did. And when you hear that, when you hear a great testimony or hear someone's story and you hear what they was going through and how God changed them and how when they jumped up in his arms, what he done and, and, and when it changed his mind, like Christian was talking about a minute ago, 
you hear all these other people talk about him, but when you get to knowing him yourself and what that relationship means and how that feels and to know him on an intimate level, and that's what he wants, by the way. The Bible said he came down in the cool of the evening to walk with Adam in the garden. He didn't do that for his own, his own sake. He's self-sustainable. He didn't need that. He's done that for Adam so that Adam could get to know him, so he could get to know Adam. And you know what? When he shows up and you're talking to him by yourself and, 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 and you feel the Holy Spirit inside and you know and it feels like that he's got his arms around you. He says, you know what? You're safe. You're safe right here. I love you. I love you. That's why I died. That's why I did what I did. That's why the Word was made flesh and dwelt among you, because I love you. I remember preaching on this one time. You know, we, we, people look at it like God is after them. God's after me. He's after me. And, and they run from him, and they run from him, and run from him. And I preached, I think I preached on this here one time. He just wants somebody to talk to. He just wants to bless your life. That's why he's after you. Amen. As a matter of fact, he comes with his arms out saying, listen, I love you. I want what's best for you. Amen. I want what's best for you. I love you. I gave you every opportunity to come to me to receive you unto myself. Amen. I love you. And I stand here with arms wide open waiting for you to jump up. Are you tired of being chased? Jump up in my arms. And I promise you. I'll keep every, I'll put a hedge about you to where nothing can get to you if you jump up in my arms. Let's stand with our head bowed and eyes closed just for a moment. If you want to come this morning and just thank him or you want to talk to God or you're tired of being chased by those hounds, won't you come this morning? Go ahead, guys.